Hi, Todd Dunn here. Welcome to my latest series of videos. In this series of videos, I'm going to document my construction of a radio controlled sailing model of a Morris Yachts M36 Day Sailor. This uh, will be a series of videos because I want to go into quite a bit of detail and I don't want to make just one video that's two hours long. So, why did I decide to build a radio controlled sailing model and why of this particular boat? Some years before I decided to build this model, I had started a small business building model sailboats for people. However, after Christmas 2005, I found myself with no orders and some time on my hands. So I decided to build a model for myself. And I also thought, well, it would be interesting to build it as an actual radio controlled sailing model rather than simply as a display model, which is what I'd normally been building because that would be an additional challenge. Why the Morris Yachts M36 Day Sailor? Well, that was a relatively new boat, only introduced about a year and a half before, back in 2004, and I thought it was a particularly pretty boat. So, I thought it would be a good possibility. Also, it's built locally, only a few miles from my home. So I would be able to interact with the builder, Morris Yachts, uh, where I knew people and get information that would help me build a very accurate model. So I decided to go on over to Morris Yachts and ask if it was all right with them for me to build a model of one of their M36 day sailors. Not surprisingly, they were fine with the idea, and I set about ordering the plans from the designer, Sparkman and Stevens, to build the model. There is, of course, another reason why I chose this particular boat. If you're familiar with radio-controlled sailing models, you know that they seldom look like actual boats that are built. But I didn't want to build just a sort of generic radio controlled sailing model that would be like all the others and would have an extreme keel, an extreme sail plan, and basically a stripped off bare deck. I wanted to build a model that would look as close to possible like an actual boat that was in production and make it into a radio controlled sailing model. The only concession I made to the standard sort of mantra of radio controlled sailing models was that I decided to build the boat 36 inches long and to, with a sail area of approximately 600 square inches so that the boat would fit into the generic 36 600 RC sailing model class. So, uh, one twelfth scale of a Morris M36 Day Sailor fit that uh, requirement quite well and was one of the factors in deciding to build this particular boat. Okay, let's take a look now at how I set about building this model. While I was waiting for the plans for the hull to arrive from Sparkman and Stevens, I set about building the mast. Morris Yachts had been kind enough to give me the dimensions of the mast. The Morris M36 Day Sailor comes equipped with a carbon fiber mast, so I decided to build a carbon fiber mast. Of course, I endeavor when I build models to make them as close to the real thing as possible. I did have to compromise a little bit in that I don't have a mandrel for building that particular carbon fiber mast by the normal method, so I decided to build it a little differently. What I did was I built a balsa wood box spar out of 1 inch balsa planks. I 
built the box bar hollow except for the bottom of the mast, the points where the spreaders would be located, and the mast head. I then shaped the forward side of the mast to match the actual mast and proceeded to lay up full length toes of linear carbon fibers set in epoxy on all the surfaces of the mast. The picture shows the box mast with the first layer of carbon fiber on it. Once I had finished putting carbon fiber on the mast, I laid up some additional carbon fiber and let it cure and use that to build a small extension to the aft face of the mast where I could put a sail track. So I built a sail track into the mast so that I could slip slides into the sail track and move them up and down. When I had the mast finished, which you can see in this picture where it's completely built out of carbon fiber, I fared it out using a vinyl ester fairing compound and then painted it white. So that took about a week to build the mast. The mast is 48 inches long and I opted to go with a deck stepped mast simply for ease in tearing the boat down for transport. Okay, now let's have a look at how I started building the hull. The first step in building the hull was to get the plans. So I ordered them from the designer Sparkman and Stevens. That is a little bit involved because uh, they make you sign a non-disclosure agreement, uh, which I did and sent that in with my order for the plans. Uh, about a week later, the plan showed up. The plans consist, for building this model, simply of a single sheet with an elevation showing the side view of the hull and the body plan which shows uh, the shape of the hull at about 12 different stations along the length. Now, I can't show you a picture of that plan because of my non-disclosure agreement with Sparkman and Stevens. But what I did when I got the plan was I scanned it into my computer where I then used my vector graphics drawing program to loft the plans at the scale I plan to build the model, which is 1 12th scale. I then printed out the body plan and use that to cut molds for each of the stations along the length of the hull. And in this picture you can see where I have started gluing those uh, station molds to a backboard to start laying up the hull. This is about the halfway point of gluing the station molds up. And I made a you know, considerable effort to get them all at the right height and make sure that the center lines line up and that they're all uh, at the correct uh, level. So once that was done, I started planking the hull. This picture shows the hull at about the halfway point of planking. And I'm going to take this opportunity to explain how I plank the hull. The hull itself is planked with 3 16 inch wide by 1 16 inch strips of balsa wood. I started this time right along the shear and planked toward the water line. And I planked with full length strips of balsa until I got to the water line at the center of the hull. At the forward and aft ends of the hull, uh, it takes a few more strips, so I started putting in wedge-shaped strips uh, and to go from the center of the hull and track along the water line uh, forward and aft. I should note that when I'm doing this planking, the individual balsa strips are glued to the station frames and to each other with cyanoacrylate super glue.
I plank down to the waterline in this way so I'll have a physical reference of where the waterline should be on the hull. I mark that with a sharpie by going along the edge of the waterline. After that, I finish planking the hull down to the bottom of the boat. And you can see here in this picture, the hull is fully planked out. Although if you look at the left end of the picture, you'll notice that the transom is very uneven. That's because I have not cut the transom in yet. That is uh, the next step. So once I get to this point, I cut the transom off and build it with the appropriate curvature. Once I finish planking the hull and building the transom, I sand the hull fair, usually with about 80 grit sandpaper until I have a nice smooth surface. Remember, I'm starting with 1 16th inch thick balsa wood. So sanding it fair is probably going to take off anywhere from a quarter to a third of the total thickness and leave me with something between about a 32nd and a 3 64th inch thick planking at this point. So the hull is very fragile. So the next step is to fiberglass the hull. I do that by putting a single layer of six ounce fiberglass cloth onto the hull set in epoxy. And this picture shows the hull after I have done that and separated it from the uh, backboard and flipped it over. The single layer of fiberglass stiffens the hull up nicely and makes it quite strong. It also has the advantage of making the hull waterproof. You will notice that at this point the hull does not have a keel. The reason for that is that I intend to build the keel separately and uh, as I'll discuss when I get to that, the keel is not going to be built to the plans provided by Sparkman and Stevens. Once the outside of the hull was fiberglassed, the hull was strong enough for me to remove the internal station frames, which I simply knock out and then sand the interior surface fair and put in fiberglass on the inside. The reason I did that is because this model is actually going to be put in the water to sail and there's a possibility that water might get into the hull so I wanted it to be waterproof inside as well as out and also fiberglassing the inside creates a cord hull which is much much stronger than just the balsa hull with fiberglass on the outside. In addition to that I uh, laid up two additional layers of fiberglass from the waterline down. So the inside of the hull is three layers of glass from the waterline down and one layer of glass from the waterline up. And here you can see uh, marks on the inside of the hull where I will be putting in the uh, rudder post and the keel. The black line uh, toward the bow is where the keel will be and aft uh, just a bit below the waterline is the mark where the rudder post will come through the hull. Once the hull was fully fiberglassed inside and out I started working on fairing the outside of the hull. That's a multi-stage process in which I start by filling the weave of the fiberglass cloth with epoxy, sanding that down, and then putting on multiple coats of vinyl ester fairing compound which are sanded off until I get a nice smooth surface. The final test is to primer paint the hull as you can see it here where I've got gray primer below the waterline and white above the waterline. I do that so that I'm not going to lose my waterline reference and this is the design waterline where I would like the boat to float when it's finished. So once the first coat of primer is on, that'll show up any additional imperfections. I can do one or two more uh, touch-up fairing passes and finally get a final coat of primer. At that point, I have a finished hull that is ready for paint and also ready for the next steps in the construction process. 
In the next video, I'm going to talk about how I built and installed the keel and the rudder. Okay, thanks for watching uh, this first video in my series on the construction of a 1 12th scale radio control sailing model of a Morris M36 day sailor. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you'll get notifications of when the next video in this series comes out. Thanks again for watching.